Hey guys, so we just got the info for the fifth anniversary of JP Dokkan, the big one, the big news. Vegito Blue, Gogeta Blue, and then some other units that we'll talk about. Um, but uh, the truth is here, um, and we're just going to do sort of like a casual overview of what we got. Um, so what's going on? Uh, nothing much. Uh, they're, <laughs> as expected, pretty good. And the animations are... Uh, you once mentioned how it's like, you know, like the LR Super Saiyan 4s are so good. They're so good. Best units in the game. But like the animations are kind of boring. So it's like, eh. But like with these guys. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you just want to see those animations all the time. They're so good. Yeah. It's Super Saiyan 4s because they were made such a long time before they were released. I feel like these guys might have been made, you know, just as long before they were released. But they like clearly like put a way more effort into these guys. I don't know. I I, to me, it looks like these guys had to have been made after Cooler, I think. I, I don't Maybe. Really, or, I don't know. Uh, actually, DPZ Space did have the data download. Uh, while we're talking, I can actually figure it out. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah, just go ahead. I'm just going to kind of, like, figure that out. All right. So, I mean, pretty much we're just going to start off by looking at Vegito Blue here. Now, obviously, this is the transformed art, but he starts as a base form card. Um, and here, the translation is not going to go through it because that would take me 400 million years because it's so, such There's a long. <laughs> so much like transformation and like untransformed active skill. It's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. It's basically like, um, like it's basically kind of like LR Broly, right? Except there, oh, it's even. One. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so I think the big question that people have right now, you know, once these guys released are like, how do they rank among like the best units in the game? And for me personally, uh, recently I've sort of been shying away from like ranking units on like a, a static top 10 list because I don't think it's really practical to do so, but I'll humor you guys and we'll sort of just discuss that real quick here. Well, not real quick, but as long as it takes us to do this, um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because, right, right. and also no matter what we say. There's going to be people who don't agree um, because... Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, okay, see, like, that's the thing. Like, like I'm a big one of the, oh, this is the best, this is the third best, this is the fourth best type thing. And, yes, most people do hate to think of that because, like, everyone evaluates units differently, right? Like, there's the people out there who just want damage, damage, damage. There's people like me who want, like, really good defense and damage. Other people who might really strongly consider, like, versatility, like how good their links are, how many teams they're on. So, like, there's many different ways to evaluate units, right? So it is hard to have, like, a definitive best or second best or something like that. Yeah. All right. So starting off with base form Vegito. Uh, you guys can see his passive right here. And his super attack effects are also very uh, relevant. Uh, he actually stacks attack infinitely um, on 12 key and 18 key. And then his transformation conditions are just after four turns. So... Pretty easy to get him to transform, um, but just something to note is that he only stacks attack in base form. Um, and then his passive is just 70% attack. And then something that's interesting is he gets 3 key on attack. So let's say you have him at 9 key somehow, uh, which is not really going to happen too often because it's not that hard to get him key because he has Fuse Fighter, etc. over in a flash. Yep. But let's just say you get him 9 key to start out. He will super attack because he gets the 3 key on attack. That's how that works. Um, and then he does have that built-in additional attack, which has a medium chance of becoming a super attack. And then there's actually something like kind of, I wouldn't really say unique, but we haven't really seen this anywhere else. It's specific to being the third attacker in a turn, which is their, them being in the third slot. He gets a high chance to evade. So a high chance to dodge is being the third attacker in a turn. What do you think about that? Like, how does that affect something like Super Battle Road? Well, okay. So one thing I'll say is that so the Vegito and Gogeta are very similar in many aspects. I think the way Gogeta is built, I feel like you're almost better off leaving him in that third spot like almost the entire time. Um, you know, maybe I'm skipping ahead a little bit, but like after he goes blue, he's not able to get two guaranteed supers in slot one and two like Vegito is, right? So you're better off getting the extra 50% chance to dodge for Gogeta, getting the guaranteed second attack for Gogeta, and then forsaking the effective against all types for him. Um, but I think in base for Vegito and Gogeta, that really helps them. Because, like, they're going to be really good in base, but they're not, like, you know, on that super high top tier level until they transform, right? So I feel as though just, like, leaving them in the third spot probably is fine. And especially on their intended team, the last resort team, you're going to have other Vegitos and Gogetas and stuff like that on those teams. So you can let them occupy the first slots. And then, you know, once the 
the blues actually come out. Like once they transform, then you can keep like Vegito in slot one or something like that, right? So I actually do really like the design. Yeah, and I and I think something to note with that is that obviously there's a lot of Vegito units who counter, like you know the AGL one who just got the uh, EZA, and then we also have the physical one who's going to get an EZA at some point. Um, uh, the, the physical Vegito blue one. Uh, there's the regular physical Super Vegito. There's the LR int Super Vegito. So there's a lot of Vegito units that counter. And obviously they work best in the first slot. So leaving them there is probably what you want to be doing. And then this guy can you know be in the second slot or third slot. And the reason why I say that is because we take a look at their transformed um, super attack effects. They raise attack and defense as a 12 key. And then 18 key he raises his defense. Which will obviously you know help them out in the second and third slots. But going back to the base form for a second. Oftentimes in super battle road when you're taking on you know whatever stage you're taking on so I guess in this case this guy would mostly be for the Patara stage um, or Realm of Gods too. Um, what what happens a lot of the time is you have a support unit in the third slot and so being a support unit a lot of the times they don't have the best defense and they just get cr like absolutely crushed like <laughs> um, in the th in the last slot because you know sometimes there's like enemies attacking like four, five, six times in the last slot, and it's like, okay, well, what do I do? Do I want to, like, break my rotation and then throw one of my main rotation units onto the third slot so he, doesn't, he, can, he can absorb that damage? In this case, you don't really have to worry about that because these guys get the high chance to dodge, and their defense is not terrible. Um, so, I feel like that is something that's, something that's going to help them, and it, I don't know, like, on these teams, you're not really going to need designated support units to help them out just because of the way Fuse Fighter works over in a flash. Like on this guy's team, Vegito, Vegito's team, you're going to have like Tech Vegito Blue, maybe Physical uh, Vegito Blue, and a lot of these over in a flash units because you're going to be weaving in Patara and Last Resort category units on the team. Like Last Resort has all the Gogetas on it. So yep. all the Gogetas pretty much have over in a flash as well. So you know, Key's not really going to be that big of an issue here. And like physical Vegito Blue getting that EZA, he's going to be a really interesting option. Yeah. All right. Um, so okay, I real quick, real quick. Yeah. So um, looks like the order of when the units were made. So I, I just got a couple here. So Tech Broly came first, just of these units I'm going to list. Then was the Int Super Saiyan 3 Goku and the Tech Super Saiyan 2 Vegeta. Then uh, Int LR Cell and AGL Gohan. So the v Goku and Vegeta are super old, right? Then SDR Cooler, then Android 13, then SDR Blue Kaioken Goku, and looks like the two fusions were just made. They're brand spanking new. Wow. Okay, so that's <laughs> that's different than what they did last year because I think, if I remember correctly, the um, LR Super Saiyan 4s were like six months. They were made yep. six months or so prior to the anniversary. <laughs> they, they were made alongside ultra full power Super Saiyan 4 Goku. Yeah, that's uh if you check their IDs on DBZ space, they're right next to him. So like they obviously just made all three of them at the same time. So that remember he came out at the end of June in twenty what was that eighteen? So Yeah, they, yeah. They I mean a long time beforehand. That's kinda good though, because like you don't want like imagine if these guys came out under super attack animations were like kinda like mid tier, that would suck. Oh yeah, oh I the way they did it with Gogeta and Vegeta I think is perfect. Absolutely. I got no complaints whatsoever. Okay, let's move on to the blue because it's 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 weird because the blue transformation, while four turns is a very good uh, condition in terms of what we've seen recently from drug like Dokkan Fest and stuff, you're not really gonna gonna get to see that all too often in Super Battle Road. But when we're talking about like the legendary Goku event or Infinite Dragon Ball history, and the new from what I've seen, the new stage of Infinite Dragon Ball history is actually pretty tough. It is um, yes, much tougher than the previous ones. I remember when that came out on Global, and I was like, what is this? Um, yeah, it was, it was but this one I heard is actually pretty tough. So, I mean, that's now a relevant thing to consider too. Um, so in those events, you're obviously going to be seeing like the full extent of all your unit's power, which means you're going to get the blue uh, Vegito transformation here. And um, let's just go ahead and take a look at what he does. 77% attack and defense to start off. And then this might be a little bit confusing just because it's like 400 years long, like this passive. Um, so he gains key plus two. And performs an additional super attack and gains key plus one and attack and defense plus seven percent when attacking an enemy as the first or second attacker in a turn and then there's a max of key plus five and attack and defense plus seven seven percent so let me just clarify he gains key plus two when attacking that's always going to happen just that that's it and then he gets a stacking key bonus up to five so he can have a maximum of key plus seven uh in total 
and then he gets a maximum of 77% additional attack and defense, which brings him up to a 154% attack and defense increase in total once you get that fully built up. And that's as the first or second attacker in a turn. On the contrary to that, as the third attacker in a turn, he could get a guaranteed additional super attack and a high chance to dodge, um, which, again, could be very useful in something like Super Battle Road where... You know, you're actually able to dodge the enemies, unlike Legendary Goku event, where UI Goku in the last uh, phase doesn't let you dodge. I really like having that option, right? Like, I feel like that's very, like, giving us more options with what to do is very good. Yeah. And it's just like, because a lot of the times you feel really bad relegating these guys to the third slot because it's like, oh, you're not going to have them back for two two more turns or whatever. Yep. But this one isn't really bad. Like, it, saving you damage in the last slot is really helpful. I mean, it's just... There's no other unit that you can really do that for and be comfortable with that. And I think this is like, like something that we're seeing that's new. Um, like getting extra abilities in the third slot is actually pretty cool. I like that a lot. And but Gogeta himself, I, I the more I think about it, the more I just like keeping him in that third slot. Like it's going to be, I think, his best mix offensively and defensively. Yeah. Because Okay, so, so Gogeta will fall behind Vegito in terms of both offense and defense because Vegito, remember, is building his defense from both supers and, you know, he's doing two guaranteed supers, whereas Gogeta is just doing the one super with the one defensive build and then an additional with super effective against all types, which I, I just don't think that... I don't think super effective against all types and one defensive buff with one super is better than the two supers and two defensive buffs, right? I think that's just a way better. So yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Um, but in terms of Vegito's offensive abilities when he's transformed, um, there's I don't think there's a single other LR in the game that does a guaranteed extra super attack besides LR Kian Khalifa, and that's conditional, right? Yeah, I'm thinking like I know because like Nail does one against Wicked Bloodline, right? Um, well, I'm just talking about LRs. LRs. I don't yeah, think no, there's I, any other ones. I, I can, okay, can you even name another unit that has the guaranteed second super attack? Like there are some, but like uh, physical Broly, I guess. Easy A. Uh, yeah. Okay. The DBZ Broly. So, yeah. Yeah. Basically. The, uh, um. Easy. That's it. <laughs> Hold on. Let me think. Yeah, even you think of Dragon Ball Super Broly, right? And like you think of him super attacking multiple times, but even then, it's only guaranteed super and then 50 percent chance that the second one is a super right Whereas yeah vegeto it's just no matter what every turn two supers boom 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 so that's like huge yeah um i think that alone because you have to keep in mind he's raising his defense both times like on those both of those super attacks and i feel like that by itself is going to help him like defensively a lot now obviously it's so weird because he he's not going to only end up being stronger offensively than Gogeta, but defensively as well. Like I, I'm, I'm the more I think about it, the more I see them in action. Vegito just feels way better. Yes, but we'll get to Gogeta later. And I have something to say about him too. Cause I think a lot of people are overlooking something. Um, uh, but something else you have to realize too, is that key is really not ever going to be an issue with these guys, especially with Gogeta. We'll get to him later though, but this guy gets two key just for existing. And then he gets, one key every time he attacks up to five. So if you have just over and a flash active, I mean, you're going to have Fuse Fighter active pretty much 100% of the time too. So let's assume you're running like over and a flash rotation with another Gogeta or Vegeta or whatever. You're going to be starting with, what is that, 11 key? Um, then you get two when you attack. That's 13. Then let's say you attack twice. That's another two. That's 15. You're starting with 15 key. You need three to get an ultra super attack. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Um and if you have your full passive built up, that's seven extra key on top of the 11 you're starting out with. That's guaranteed 18 key super attack. That's why they did it like that, I think. Um, yeah. So having this guy as the first or second attacker in a turn, I mean, that's just like... You know what I'm realizing, too, as I look at this? Can you get that built up? So the, the, the build up only happens in the first or second slot, I think. Um... Once you have that fully built up, can you then oh, throw him true. into the third slot and then have him get the high chance to dodge while while keeping everything built up? Oh, that's interesting. You're right. They do only build up in the first or second turn. Uh, so that hurts my plan for Gogeta right there because you definitely want to be building that up. Yeah, well, you can keep them in the third slot while they're untransformed. And then once they transform, you build them up. I mean, this is going to take many many turns but you build them up and then once they're fully built up or whatever you can just put them in a third slot they'll have 154 percent attack and defense they'll have an extra seven key 
and then they'll get high chance to dodge at the form of additional super attack. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, what's funny is like the only viable situation for that against Int UI Goku, you couldn't even get the dodge, right? So like you can't, as of right now, I don't even think you could really test that out. Like it's just. <laughs> yeah, maybe Infinite Dragon Ball history, I guess, but I don't, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't, the, the event, it is like the hardest one by far, but it just, it doesn't have the same length, I think, as UI Goku. I don't know. Maybe I'd have to run through it again, but like, I was just actually testing these Vegitos against it, and it's just, we're just tearing through it in seconds. Like, it's. <laughs> the the yeah. Vegito is just so crazy. He's just so, so crazy. And then lastly, we can just talk about the active skill because, I mean, it's, it's it, it just does so much damage. Because think about it. It activates this turn after you transform. Yep. And I mean, you don't have you don't technically have to activate it then. Uh, the secondary condition is that you have to have the enemy be under uh, what fifty percent health when there's one enemy. Um, so you're gonna have like what at least some attack built up. So that's gonna factor into that. You're gonna have the pre-transformation attack stacking from the base form factor into that as well. It's the same same it's, uh, the same way that uh, strength spirit bomb Kaioken blue Goku. Uh, you know, makes his active skill do so much damage. And this guy's an LR. <laughs> so, I mean, this... In Dokkan Fest events, I think it is reasonable that you could see this every once in a while. Because um, the way they built it, where the enemy has to be below 50% HP, so it's sort of like a finisher, right? A finishing blow. Um, and then by the time... So the earliest that either can get it is turn 6. Because they can transform on turn 4, and then it's got to be one turn later where they get the active skill. So that's turn six or seven where you're going to see them be able to get that, right? So, like, at a Dokkan event, you could hit that six-turn mark, and the enemy probably would be below 50% HP at that point, and you just finish him with the active skill, right? Um, and then, you know, obviously Legendary Goku event, you can rock that. But I do think about, like, Super Battle Road and Battlefield, that'll be tough. I, I think, actually, against Jiren, I mean, you know, so right now you're, you're a global-only player, right? So, like, you guys are going to get the the Jiren battlefield update soon. But I think v Vegito and Gogeta, their active skill, maybe the best place in the game for it would probably be against that Jiren. That's where it could be the most helpful because that Jiren does not play games. He's really, really tough. Yeah, yeah. I didn't even think about that. Um, and that fight does actually sometimes last that long to get to six turns. So, because I've seen many people have gotten the uh, 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 the OG three year LR fusions on that. I've seen many screenshots of people beating Jiren with like LR Vegito and Gogeta from the three anniversary. So, well, I think that pretty much covers everything about this guy. Uh, just just to let you guys know, I haven't seen this guy technically in action yet. Um, literally, the data just dropped what a few hours ago, um, yeah, and hours just from personally looking at what this guy is doing. I would have to put him over every other LR in the game right now. As of right now, for Vegito, I am linked. I am like really, really, really like leaning that way. And that's so that's crazy because I remember when Kalen Khalifa came out, and like we didn't even like it was so hard to even comprehend how OP they were. And now this guy's like, All right, hello, like I'm here. <laughs> It's like, again, what, one thing I think really, really benefits them is that in base, you just toss them into that third slot and, like, defensively, they're going to be so good. I, yeah. I, I think that is just very helpful. Because, like, if you think about, like, Super Battle Road or something like that, like, they're going to have good defense and the 50% chance to dodge. Usually units that can dodge like that don't also have crazy defense, but they do, so... Um, okay, I think that covers Vegito. Um, so that's him. Let's move on to Gogeta. Um, so Gogeta's strength, and what's interesting to note about these guys is that Vegito's attack, Gogeta's strength, so they're both going to have the innate 5 crit from the potential system. Um, so Gogeta here is basically the same leader skill as Vegito, but instead of Patara, he has fusions. And his um, pre-transformation uh, passive is literally the exact same as Vegito, so... In terms of comparing them there, the only difference you're looking at is that Gogeta has different links. That's it. They have the same conditions. They have the same uh, effects on their super attacks. So it's literally a copy and paste of Vegito, except for like one or two links. Um, so I think that's fine, right? Like you don't, you don't, you don't have any thoughts about that, do you? Uh, no. I, like I, I don't, I don't have an issue at all. Okay. 
Uh, moving on to the transformation, this is where things get a little bit different. So Gogeta yeah. actually gets five key when attacking. Um, so he, he's going to have way less key issues than Vegeta does. And I'm not saying Vegeta's going to have key issues at all because I don't think he will. But the ability to just get five key on attack. So if you if you you start at six key, just you know from the leader skill, if you get one key sphere, which is a guarantee, you're guaranteed to super attack. This guy will never not super attack when he's transformed. Um, and then obviously over in a flash, and this guy also has um, his warrior gods, which which Vegeta Blue does not have. But I mean. Like I said, for Vegito Blue, if he's fighter over a flash, is definitely more than he needs. Uh, and then this guy's also um, uh, something, something to notice. This guy's not stacking key on attack. He just has that five whenever he attacks, which is one difference. The other difference is this guy gets a uh, attacks effective against all types, um, and I think that's something that people overlook a lot. Uh, it's obviously like a gigantic game changer because that means that you can prioritize uh, additionals for this guy instead of crits. Um, I mean, which also benefits with like uh, the defense raising for this unit. So like he would function a lot better defensively if he would get that extra super attack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but some, the the big difference I feel like between Gogeta and Vegito is that Vegito gets that guaranteed second super attack, which, like we said. Obviously, it results in a lot more damage, and then it also helps him defensively because he gets that extra defense stack from his super attack effect. Yeah. On the other hand, this Gogeta just has a regular normal attack as an additional, um, which is not bad because it's going to be effective against all types when he's in the first or second slot. Now, keep that in mind, too, that that uh, effective against all types is only when he's in the first or second slot. And as long as he's built up a little bit in the first or second slot as blue... Um, that normal is actually doing enough damage to even hurt like the str ui goku and the legendary goku event that like that's a big deal yeah and also that um that can help proc an additional super attack um from the potential system because the more attacks you do the more chances you get to proc that extra uh, attack um and that's pretty much the big difference i feel like um that pushes vegeta over the edge a little bit even though gogeta does have that uh, you know effective against all types well in the first or second slot uh, it's, an additional super is just so big um, and defensively like just, let's be real both these guys are not going to be lacking offensively at all so that's that's not what I'm worried about here like it, there's nothing to worry about offensively here it's just once you start getting into those like really like late stages of like the legendary Goku event or infinite Dragon Ball history like I know the new one has like the full power Broly and uh, Gogeta Blue as the last two stages yeah. once you start getting into those then it becomes more of a mitigation game instead of just like, oh, like, can I kill this guy in one attack? From what I've seen, though, it seems as though Vegito easily is able to have enough defense to take double digits um, in those later stages of the Goku event. Um, I, I, I can't off the top of my head remember where Gogeta was, but they have sort of similar numbers before they super attack, right? Because, like, we we can't see what, like, Vegito's true defensive stat's going to be because he has the two defensive buffs on super, right? But, like, before the super attacks start in the turn, their defensive numbers are pretty much the same. Yeah, 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 that is true. Um, but the thing I wanted to mention with the Gogeta is I do think his, um, his, his active skill is significantly better than Vegito's. And the reason why I say that is because he's getting the uh, effective against all types with that ultimate okay. skill. I tested this. If he's in the first or second slot, he does get it, too. Yeah, I think that's a big difference. But but that's only going to come into play as a major factor against like versus uh in the in the you know discussion with with Gogeta versus Vegito if Gogeta uses that earlier on because what Vegito can do is he can build up that extra um 77% attack and defense. Well, actually no, it doesn't matter because they both get the additional attack, never mind. So yeah, I do think that Gogeta's Here's the thing. I don't even the legendary Goku event. I don't know if it's long enough. Like if you're running a proper team with these guys, I don't know that it's long enough for you to build up their full passive. Like I just don't think so. Like they do too much damage, and like the units around them are going to be doing too much because you have to get what eleven attacks. I, so yeah. I don't think you're going to build that up. Even the legendary Goku event, you're not going to be able to build that up with either. I don't think. Unless you're running like a full no dupe team, like fifty five percent across the board or something like that. Yeah, possibly. I mean, it it takes a long time to build up, right? Yeah, because Ele eleven attacks is a lot. That's four turns in blue, right? 
if if you're getting uh, uh, like three attacks every time. Yeah, and the fact like the potential for your enemy to to survive three super attacks from these guys is very low. <laughs> very low, yeah. But I do want to make the point that I think uh, Gogeta's uh, active skill is better than Vegito's just because the uh, effective against all. It's kind of like the spirit bomb, right? It's effective against all yep. types most of the time. Okay, so I mean, if I were to rank this guy, I, it's hard to say because I do think that extra super attack does make a big difference. But he's still so impressive. I would have to put him right after Vegito for me. Like, I don't know. I would have to, I'd have to see him in action before I say that for sure. Because again, I have not seen these guys actually used in game yet. But just from what I'm seeing, the details here, 154% attack and defense. He gets five key for existing. He gets effective against all types for existing. He, in the third slot, gets um, dodge, and then he has an active skill that is effective against all types and does 400 million fulfilling damage. So, like, uh, yeah. I don't know. What, what do you think about that? Um, As of right now, I'm leaning towards Vegito as the number one unit in the game. I think he probably is better than Kalen Khalifa. Gogeta, I want more time to use him to see. Like, I want to take these units everywhere, right? I want to take them in Easy A's, Battlefield, Super Battle World, all these different places to really make my assessment. But I feel as though Gohan and Goten potentially could be better than Gogeta. I don't know. Because, like, I, 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 having the two super attacks for Vegito is just, like, it's just so crazy. It's just so crazy. And, like, I just feel like that's a huge advantage over Gogeta. Gohan and, like, and Goten are actually very similar to this Gogeta, right? Yeah. Just in the way they operate, because they also get the additional normal attack, um, right? And then that can proc the super attack, which you see yeah, a lot of the time happen. They can do three super attacks just like Vegito and Gogeta can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's true, because Go Gohan and Goten's additional can be a super attack, whereas this guy's can't. Yeah, and it's I, guess, I think it's a 30% chance for Gohan and Goten for that second to be a super. It's the same chance as uh, the OG Tech Vegito Blue. Which is weird because he never supers for me, <laughs> so I don't know. I don't get that. Whereas Gohan and Goten, every time I use them, that second attack is a super for me. It feels like. Yeah, I mean the only difference there though is that this guy gets effective against all types, which is a big difference, and it's much easier to activate this guy's active skill than Gohan and Goten. Yeah, <sighs> you're not gonna you're not gonna see their active skill it's almost ever. It's it's really hard to say. I mean they I will I think Gohan and Goten though they will have more defense right than this guy <sighs> uh, yes i mean if in ui goku did not cancel dodging I, I don't know actually i gogeta might be very similar defensively to gohan and goten i think they're gonna hit some of the similar numbers again i'm not sure exactly how big the buff is their defensive buff okay so both gogeta and vegeto I don't know how much defense they actually give themselves on that 12 key super attack, but I've seen both Vegito and Gogeta around 130 K defense before they even attack. So what I will say though, is I do think these guys have way better links than go on to go 10 oh, um, yeah. and their teams are way better. Yep. So I don't know, man, I, I have to put these guys above them, but we'll, I mean, again, I'll have to see in, in game. I just see no way that that last resort team is not the number one team right now. Like, that team is just going to be so ludicrous. Yeah, you got Strength Cooler on there. <laughs> uh, okay, let's move on, because I feel like we spent a lot of time talking about these guys. But I haven't seen a lot of people talking about the secondary banner units. So we have Super Saiyan Trunks and Mai from the Goku Black Saga. And it's a Mafuba unit. And... When I first saw the details of this guy, I was we were in Discord and I was like, "What? What? Like, what? yeah, <laughs> this, what is going on?" Um, so this guy's actually a joint forces leader, which is interesting. Uh, I don't believe we have like a 120 leader for them. Um, so that's that's interesting. Um, because yeah, Kale and Khalifa they're 130, right? So yeah, I think they're what four key 130. Uh, let me double check, actually. Kale and Khalifa, the other four key, one thirty. That four key is very helpful too. Yeah. Um, and then the other leaders for joint forces is just Yamcha and Boar, who are at a hundred percent. So. Yeah, I mean, just just quickly going through this. I mean, the important thing to note is that they get a hundred percent attack and defense just for you know a start of turn. Yep. Then they get key three and attack and defense was hundred percent. If there is a Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan you know named character on your team, which is very now, easy to do. Hold on. Okay, they did not screw us this time, finally. 
the key of this is that if there's a character on your team not in the same turn which allows you to actually build a proper team when these units have to be used on the same turn they're killing your freedom of team building and it really hurts makes those units just not fun at all but it's going to be so easy to run the one that comes to mind immediately for me is the tech blue vegeta the support type uh, father son gallic gun easy a one you could easily run him on like a future or uh time travelers team with this this mayan trunks which is where i think they're going to be at their best right well we also have uh vegeto blue the the physical one is going to be getting his easy a soon yep. we also have the uh, int vegeta who's probably going to be getting his easy a soon so i mean there's a lot of options there i feel like that Int vegeta is going to easy a in this celebration yeah, maybe during part two, we could definitely see that. Maybe him and a few other guys, too. Yep. Um, so, yeah, he gets that. He gets an additional 100% attack if there's a future Saga category enemy, which is, you know, it's not going to happen that often. Uh, and then he gets one more 100% attack and three key um, and performs a critical hit if there's a Goku Black or a Masu enemy, which, again, it's not going to happen too often. So uh, The number one thing I thought of immediately is future Super Battle Road. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you have this kind of future super battle, you win. That's just how it is. Because every enemy is future, so they have their two hundred percent attack, and then the final fight, there's a Goku Black and Zamasu, so they have three hundred percent attack and guaranteed crits. That is just no. That would and be they greatly raise attack and defense on. Super that would be four hundred percent attack. Yeah, <laughs> because they're going to have two hundred percent attack pretty much just for building your team correctly. Yep. Attack and defense too, and three key. Oh so, yeah, because they get another 100 percent for the blue on there. Oh yeah. Yeah, so they're, they're gonna. Not, they're not done. They still got another fun mechanic. Yeah, so they're gonna be at 200 percent attack and defense and three key just for you know being on a proper team. Then they have an active skill, uh, and I was really surprised that they actually had an active skill. Um, it is really easy to activate this too. All you need to have is a uh, Trunks Teen Future Trunks Future or My Future on your team, which is like obviously you're gonna have that just you know for building a future team. Yep. And after three turns, which is easy. So, if you guys are familiar with the, um, what is it, the Master Roshi uh, Mafuba unit from Dragon Ball, this is pretty much that, but way better. Uh, he raises attack by 628%. Real quick, let me cut in. What What is the meaning behind the 628% again? I think it is, I think, like, literally Mafuba, like, if you look into, like, the alternate ways of saying 6, 2, and 8, it is Mafuba. Yeah. Okay, yeah, because I, I figured that was some sort of, like, Japanese pun or something like that. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people don't get that though. Like even Japanese people don't get that, so I don't know. Oh, okay, okay. Um, and then deals critical hits during the turn of activation, and then stuns the attacked enemy, but your own defense is halved. But that doesn't matter because whatever you're attacking is going to be dead. So. <laughs> now, so this unit is, is disgusting, right? And uh, the fact that you could do this three turns, just having a, a Trunks team, future Trunks future, or my future, like you're gonna have those units on these teams. Like that's not that's not difficult to do at all right like you're gonna see that this to me makes me so excited because one of the big holes in dokkan is early dragon ball saiyan saga namek saga in dragon ball right tien only does it in the anime but he uses the mafuba at one point um and then kami and piccolo trade mafubas in the world tournament which badly needs buffs i mean so we potentially could have a uh, Piccolo Jr. unit who would have a different name than Dokkan Fest Piccolo who could be built in this exact same manner. Just a catastrophic buff for the World Tournament team as well as the Namekian team. So that gets me really excited. So the only they could do for that too is, you know, World Tournament units like that are on that category are very, very bad. Yes. So what they, what they could actually do is they could create some kind of like support unit for that team that just straight up gives like 70% attack and defense. Mm. It's just like, we're going to make these bad cards really OP if they're on this terrible category or something. <laughs> like, I don't know. I feel like an easy thing they could do is a dual Dokkan Fest, right? So you have Dokkan Fest, Giant Namekian Majunior, right? From this fight with Goku. Then the secondary new banner unit on that banner would be Mafuba Majunior. So you'd be able to use them together. And then on, you know, you'd have Goku, and then maybe you would have either a new Kami, or you would have like a Krillin, because Krillin performed very well in his fight against Piccolo in that world tournament. So like, yeah. that would be a good way to get like, boom, Krillin, great for the world tournament, probably good for, I can't think of any other teams he's on. But <laughs> uh, bald team? They can, make, they can make the bald category. Yeah, he's actually on none besides just like his art categories, huh? That's very unfortunate for our boy Krillin. They could do like an Earthling category. I feel like that wouldn't be too bad. 
or a Z fighter. Z fighter is basic as hell. I don't know why they don't have that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. I just double check because the two TUR Krillins, one is on the Android slash Cell Saga team, and the other is on the Movie Hero team, and that's it. Yeah, it's very limited. Um, but something that I want to just point out about this unit is that the fact that this is an active skill means that in Super Battle Road, you oh. you literally can just kill one unit for free. Yep. That's it. And oh, 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 here's the thing. Even if you don't kill them, they're stunned. Yeah, but there's no way you're not going to kill them. <laughs> okay, so like if you're saying it's proper, like, okay, so, okay. Because it does say temporarily increase attack. So that means if you've got the 400%, they would then have over a thousand percent attack. Yep. <laughs> Balanced. Yeah. So that um, 628% attack increase, that temporary increase is like the same thing, you know, how LR Super Saiyan 4 Goku does his active skill. It's like temporarily massively raises attack. That's the same thing as that. But this is, yeah. you know, instead of 100% increase for massive, this is 628%. <laughs> yeah, instead of, you know, the 100%, we just times it by six, you know, very fair. And it's a crit and it stuns. Um, and I don't really think the defense being halved is relevant because you just put them in a position that is to where. stunning it... to me because Roshi stuns himself, which hurts. Okay, because. Okay, so Roshi stuns himself so you can't get an additional super. But, like, you can do the active skill and then they can then attack again. Like, it's just so crazy. Yeah, but remember that that 620% goes away after the active skill. I know, but still, like, like just think of, like, what they are capable of doing, right? I'm yeah, sure, yeah. Like, they do their active skill and then they double super. Like... <laughs> yeah, it's like... Is that it's... the most damaging, like, single, like, turn any unit can have in the game? Like... I guess maybe like a, a Vegito Blue fully built up with this active skill would probably be number one. Well, but... Spear Bomb Goku, but this is probably oh, similar well, yeah. to that. Yeah, Spear Bomb. Um, and his links are pretty good too. He has prepared for battle. I'm glad they did that. Does the LR Trunks and Maya prepare for battle? I don't think so. I think they do. Do they? Okay. I think so, yeah. Um, Dismal Feature is all right. I think that's like what, what, one key link. Um, and they can actually be used alongside tr that Trunks and Maya because that one is base Trunks, right? And this one is Rage Trunks. Yeah, the, yeah, this is uh, you know Super Saiyan Trunks because Super Saiyan Rage is, is, is not a transformation. Um, okay, so this is uh, honestly, uh, I don't want to say they're a top ten TUR in the game, but I'm going to say they're a top ten TUR in the game. <laughs> I'll say it. Because <laughs> um, I got no problem saying it. <laughs> I mean, even on their super attack, they greatly raise attack and defense for one turn. That's not. Yeah. That's not insignificant. <laughs> With two hundred percent defense already. <laughs> Yeah. This so. is... All right. Um, so moving on. Uh, and by the way, they're also on the last resort category. <sighs> you know, that, that team needed a buff. Yeah, they're not good enough. Uh, so here we have Dragon Ball Super Broly Bardock and Gine. They are a uh, movie heroes leader. Uh, this is the last unit we will be looking at here. They are very similar to Trunks and Mai. Um, they operate kind of the same way, except their active skill is different. So they are... Attack and damage plus 100%, uh, just for, you know, base. Keep plus 3, attack plus 100% if there's a category or a character on your team whose name contains Goku. So I'm just going to think of that like they just have that active 100% of the time. Um, actually, let me just double check something. I might have made a mistake because that says 100% attack but not defense. Let me just see here. Okay, what's interesting too is... Oh yeah, I did, I did make a mistake. It should be attack and defense there. Okay, so Bardock and Gine, they get 100% attack and defense, and three key and 100% attack and defense with Goku. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me just... Okay, I'll, I'll amend that later, but th they have pretty much the same passive as Trunks and Mai, just different conditions. Yep. Um, because they get uh, extra attack if there's movie bosses, category enemy, and then extra three key, 100% attack if... Uh, and perform a critical hit if there's an enemy's name contains Frieza, excluding you know Soldier. Funny about that movie bosses category thing is that, like, that's not really... Like, Bardock you know, like, doesn't really go up against the boss of that movie, right? Like, that's just kind of a... That's why they really should... That should be the movie villains category in reality. Bardock literally had, like... Uh, like, he, he attacked once in that movie, and he got crushed. Like... <laughs> I'm surprised he's a card. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I'm, I knew he'd eventually be a card, but... Oh, his name is... Um, so... Is it is it just Bardock and Gine their name? Like, is there not uh like Broly or anything like that? No, yeah, it's, it's just Bardock and Gine. Okay, okay. Um, and then the big difference between this guy and the Trunks of Mai is that this guy has a much different active skill. Um, it's actually a little bit harder to activate this guy's active skill, but you'll see why. Uh, you know, fourth turn below eighty percent HP, so it's not terrible. 
it's definitely obtainable on on like most events i would say yeah. um but then this is interesting because we have not seen this kind of effect before in the game removes any abnormal conditions from allies which is something that we don't we haven't seen that before and then all allies attack plus 22 percent for two turns so that works like b pan's active skill um obviously it's not as big because what is b pan's like 30 um uh yeah 30 percent. Yep. so this is 22 but it's for two turns so that's that's going to be pretty big because it's going to overall this is going to affect your team more than b pan's will just because you get that two turns in there yeah wait, wait. um and it's thirty three percent, by the way. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and removes all any abnormal conditions from allies. So what I think that means is, let's say you're fighting against the Dragon Ball Super Broly Dokkan event, and he massively reduces your defense. I think that would reset that. Yeah. Do you think that's what that yeah. means? Yeah. This is the because this is the first time we saw that. I saw that actor skill. I was like, I don't know what that means. Like, I I obviously know what the words say, but like I in terms right of now- what. Go ahead. I feel as though it's not uh this okay, this would have been far better, I think, if it prevented it as well. Because like so that a boss that destroys your defense like that, one reason Jiren on uh Dokkan Battlefield is so tough is because he does that. So like he can super attack you right away and destroys your defense, and then every normal attack he does from that point is like 50k, right? But the issue is that you're in danger immediately right there. So being able to fix the abnormal condition, you know, later in the turn or next turn, that doesn't really help that much. So I wonder if this is something they'll start pushing a little bit more is bosses that do this. Yeah, I can see that for sure. Um, personally, I would say this guy is not as good or not as, as impressive on paper as the Trunks and Mai are. No, not even close. No, no, no. Yeah. But I mean, him having prepared for battle is always good. He has experienced fighters, which is a nice link. Um, he's on Movie Heroes, so that's nice. Um, that's, I mean, because this guy is not a support unit, um, but he has an active skill that is a support effect, so I think that's interesting. It's kind of like, um, it's kind of like the EZA Gallic Gun, Father Son Gallic Gun Trunks and Vegeta. Like, they have good attack and they have pretty good defense, but they're also supporting the team. So it's kind of like it's kind of like that hybrid role where they're doing both. Um, so I kind of like that. Too, I haven't actually seen the card in action, but it seems as though like it's just mainly going to be Bardock, and then Gine comes in for the active skill. Yeah, that's what I've seen too. I mean, I haven't really looked at the um, like super attacks or whatever, but I saw the active skill because I wanted to see if there was like a voice or whatever. And unfortunately, there isn't. Um, but it, yeah, it looked pretty good. Um, yeah. Um, so those are all the four. I, I said. Wouldn't spend too much time on this, but it's like 40 minutes. But um, yeah, those are the four units that came out for the data download tonight. Uh, obviously, people are extremely hyped about this. Um, any last thoughts as we wrap this up? I personally would say that uh, these are definitely anniversary worthy units. <laughs> I'll say that. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's it. <laughs> I. You know, I, this anniversary right now, the five anniversary, seems like easily the high point in Dokkan's history. I mean, they brought the hype with the proper units. The super attacks are the best animations we've seen in the game. Uh, the celebration is already insanely generous. We have this new equipment feature, which, I mean, talking about the way that system is set up is another video as well. We could, like, you know, a, a lot of these units, like these Vegito and Gogeta units, are designed in a way where the equipment is very impactful on them. Units that do additionals built in get way more of a buff from that equipment than like units that just like do like one attack or something like that. So, uh, yeah, uh, Dokkan is, you know, it's very good right now. Very, very good. Yeah, I would definitely agree with that. Um, okay, so this is a little bit longer than I thought, but that's fine. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, and the live stream happening in about five hours or six hours, whatever it is. So, Hopefully we can get some new info there and I'll see you guys then.